All right, so today's project, guys, I'm going to be working on this Lost Mandy AZ8 tripod. The feet, the rubber that they have on it, I've had this thing for years, and the rubber that they have on it just never stays. It keeps wanting to move. I put it back, and so finally I'm going to do something about it, and I'm going to replace it, and I'm going to show you what I've done to do that. Now here you see the bottom of one of the feet that I've not cleaned up yet. That's important. So I've cleaned up this one and the uh, other one. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of doing, but you want to make sure you get that perfectly smooth, perfectly clean of any residue of any of that glue that last Mandy had on there. So here's what I use. I, I did a review of these uh, paper towels and where you can buy them. They're nice and heavy duty and you can throw them away. They're not that expensive. It's uh, like the kind you get at gas stations. So I'll, took, I'll take one of those and then I have lacquer thinner that I put in a spray bottle. And I'll spray some on the foot. It did not hurt the anodizing at all. It didn't take anything off. And I'll spray some on the paper towel. And then what I do is it took repeated use of clean paper towels to get all that glue off and so it takes a little bit of time but well worth it you gotta get all that glue off all right guys so I've got the third and final one completed and this actually took the longest it was really messy so <clears throat> all three pads on the last mini AZ8 are clean and ready for the next step now the next thing that I want to do is rough up the bottom of all three of these feet. Now I happen to have some uh, 50 grit sandpaper. <clears throat> you could use 60, 80, but you want something a little bit rough. And we're just going to go over the surface, scuff it up. like that next I want to take some of that uh, paper that we used put some those paper towels put some lacquer thinner on it and wipe off the area and we can see that it's nicely scuffed and it's not quite as um, doesn't feel the same smoothness as the sides do. All right, so I actually went over it one more time, as you can see. Next, we want to take some compressed air. And you're going to want to make sure you want to make sure that there's no dust in the area. Just make sure that it's cleaned, no dust. And then we're going to do the other two feet the exact same way. So here's what I did. Got everything cleaned up. All three feet are sanded. I went back over, cleaned them all up after I uh, used the air compressor all over the legs. Cleaned them back up with uh, the paper towel and lacquer thinner just to make sure all dust and dirt was off. And then blew them off again. And we'll go to the next step. Next, I brought the uh, last mini tripod into the garage and <clears throat> I set it on the floor like you see here. Then I took some lacquer thinner on a, on a paper towel, lifted one leg at a time, wiped the bottom to ensure no more dirt, and then put some wax paper down under each foot. And when we put our rubber pad down that we're going to epoxy to these legs, we're going to let the natural weight of the tripod itself be the clamping force or uh, you know until the uh, epoxy dries next i'll be cutting some feet out of this mud flat material made for trucks now i cut these one and a half inches wide by three and a quarter inches long and as you can see they're thick they're a quarter inch thick 
here you see one of those pads underneath the leg of that tripod that's how it's going to be they're just a hair about the same width and just a hair longer nothing fancy and then we're going to epoxy that rubber to those feet again you've got to use lacquer thinner make sure you clean the side that you're going to adhere to the foot of the tripod make sure it's very very clean now in this particular case there's a little white um, painted part on the one side that's going to be the bottom so I know that this surface which I've already done you want very clean alright so now you've got all your three legs done everything's ready to go got all your feet cut the next thing to do is epoxy now this is what I use you can use any kind of epoxy two part this is JB Weld clear weld I bought some new stuff the other day uh, the other ones I've got very little left and I'm just gonna throw that out and reuse this and, or, and, and just use the new and um, this has always worked well for me and I'll show you how I'm gonna do this one thing I've always thought odd was they have on the top your mixing tray well how many times are you gonna use that because with as big of a uh, container they give you you sure don't want to mix that it's not going to fit in here so I don't use this then they give you this to mix it with so these would only be a one-time use so by only giving you one is useless I'm going to show you what I do to mix my epoxy so guys this is what I use to mix toothpicks as I said earlier there it's a one-time use I use the toothpicks then I'll take my wax paper again and fold it make sure there's four layers And I will use the toothpicks when I put some of that epoxy two-part on here. I use the toothpicks to mix it around. Okay, so I've got this ready to go. One thing I do with this epoxy is I'll, I'll take a mark, either red, black, whatever color, marker, and mark this so that when I pull this off and I put it back on, I know that it's orientated the same way. Uh, because you've got two different products here that will be in that cap and that's I've always just done that but make sure when you do this you're away from any pets and kids because if you have this any left over which you normally will have some and a pet gets in it could be uh, or a child extremely dangerous whether the, they eat it whatever so when working with epoxy make sure you're away from anything that can get into it when you're done take it and throw it out that's why I like doing it this way and each one of these legs I'm going to be mixing one at a time just enough to do one at a time make sure that you've got your paper towels handy with lacquer thinner just in case you need it believe me you want to make sure okay so I'm going to work quick here That should be enough put that on then just do like I'm doing here you want to mix it up nice again the beauty of the toothpicks they're cheap and you throw them out and I find this to be a good way to do it You've got other ones available should you need them they get dirty or something like that you don't want to be handling them so just okay now what I'm gonna do is start putting it hopefully there's enough on there maybe not I want to work quick with this stuff there may not be enough well we can we can mix up some more I'm just gonna put it on like this Okay, now I'll probably get some on my hands, so that's why we want the lacquer thinner. Okay, there should be enough here. We're going to make sure, may as well use this up. 
and we'll just spread it around like this okay that looks good now let's get the leg up we're gonna eye this up and I'm gonna have a little bit more sticking out the front there we go that's simple now I'm gonna get my cleaner here that's my hand spray my lacquer thinner on the, the ray Cleanliness is everything you don't want to, if you get some of this on your hands, you got time to clean it up. But you don't want to get it all over everything else. Everything you touch will make a mess. So, now I'm seeing something, which is why I'm using wax paper. You'll see that some of it's dripping out. So I'm just going to come across here and just take some of that out. And again, we're going to use the weight of the tripod as a clamp. So I'm just going to do that. Now, the beauty of this also by using wax paper is if it sticks along the edges, who cares? It's not going to matter. Then I'm just going to... Um, it's nothing. The, the wax paper, you, you can clean that off. So we're not going to lift any more of that up anymore. Just going to come along the back side here. like that we're gonna leave it this we're now gonna throw out see how simple that was no pet or child can get into that and let me I think I'm gonna put a little lacquer thinner on this paper towel and on the back side here I'm just gonna like that that looks good so there you are we'll let that set up I'm gonna go ahead and mix and do the other two legs I'll just lift them up a little like that that will not disturb this leg we're gonna be fine all right so all three legs are done now and I've got four acres of grass to cut so I'll come back later we'll see how this turned out and again the reason for the wax paper on the between the rub uh, the uh, mud flat material in the garage floor or wherever you're doing it is because you're going to get some runoff on the edges and so the wax paper being shiny uh, will be able to take that right off and I'll show you later when I pull these apart uh, in a few hours and uh, any residue along the side I could probably just cut off whatever and not even worry about it another thing between each leg that was the first one I did then I did the second one and then we've got the third what I did is I waited about five minutes or a little longer just to make sure that the epoxy set up enough because when I do lift that leg up, I wanted to make sure that the other side that had been freshly glued uh, was not going to shift. Now this is a five minute epoxy, so, but I just did that to ensure that there was no movement of the leg on the uh, pad that I had just previously epoxied down. Alright, so I'm going to take a break here from cutting grass. It's a cooler day out today, not as warm as I thought, and I'm going to, um, this is the first leg that I did, so let me pull this up, and there you go, yep, that's fine, so I'll just set that back down, like that, and let's just look at the second leg that I did. Yep, see how nice that is with that wax paper? Set that down. And let's go to the third and final leg. 
and we'll see there that's beautiful that's why I like that wax paper so there is a little let's see here there is a little something sticking over on the side here we'll look at this but that's not going to be a big deal yeah that won't hurt a thing we're not building a church I'm not even sure if I'll cut that off I'll deal with it later and the other one had something like that too so this will work out pretty good and you've got much heavier rubber here so when using it on concrete and um, it shouldn't uh, have the issue of moving the ones that last Manny provided you'd put them on there they'd stay but then as you're using it they would like move they, they wouldn't stay put um, kind of annoying so like I said it came to the point where I said I got to do something about that so they'd be on there and they'd be centered and then as you're using it and stuff they'd migrate and move they'd slide one way or another and now they'd be sticking over and I'd have to pull it off restick it and you know I, why they did that I don't know I'm not sure what they used and I figured the epoxy permanently putting them on there you are never going to wear out those pads. The, the, uh, that, that rubber that's made for semi uh, uh, mud flaps, this would be 10 times better.